Welcome everyone to today's Flex webinar. I'm your host, Marcus Merritt. Uh, today, we're just gonna do another update on what's new, what's been uh, introduced, and I'm gonna focus on some kind of neat little features that I've uh, seen in the last couple uh, patches. One thing though I'm gonna find interesting is I decided to schedule this a few weeks ago when there was a pretty neat uh, little feature added, one thing that we're gonna cover during this, but, um, the uh, patch today added some feature I'm really excited about. So we're actually gonna start with that new feature that was added in today's patch um, on that. So let's go ahead and share my screen and get started. And so we're gonna go over here to my screen. All right. So in here, I've got this uh, quote. We're gonna kind of pretend here that I made um, that I've got uh, Two different places where I've got the same item on here, this uh, powered speaker, okay? We went already ahead and prepped it. We're playing that this is a rental uh, of this, just a cross rental. Now in this, uh, we're gonna do some more make-believe and we're gonna pretend I've got some other items on this rental, okay? I didn't bother to add them. Doesn't matter for what I'm gonna demo, okay? And the customer calls back and says, you know what? We, we realize some other speakers are coming back. We have enough. I don't need the speakers. I just need the other items. And so, you want to remove those from uh, from the uh, uh, pull sheet. You want to remove them from the quote. You want to pull them off the pull sheet, off the manifest, and so that your manifest is accurate. Okay? And so we need to unscan them. So starting today, you can now go to the related scan records to undo scans. Okay? Uh, now we'll see here that it's pulling up the three scans because I did it with this line that has two, and so it's the two items that are prepped and linked to that, and then one of the return. Um, in this scenario, we're gonna pretend that one of the warehouse guys heard that, and he's like, well, I'll just go return them. And uh, in the past, I've sometimes even said, that's an okay uh, way to do it. If you look back at the history, you'll notice the item was only out for 30 minutes, means it didn't really go out on the show. But with this update, it's a lot easier to fix that. And so we're going to go, no, no, we want to have our manifest be accurate. We want to unscan those items. We don't want them to ever have been on that manifest. Okay. So we want to unscan those. Okay. So we can obviously also go to this one. This one's only going to pull up two. Um, one real quick thing I want to highlight is that um, since the general availability update, um, you're going to start seeing this new icon pop on things when they first get released and for uh, two or three releases afterwards, probably mostly around a month afterwards, they'll stay as this new. And these are features we extra want you to please use, but be prepared. If you think there's a bug or an issue with it, please report that. Okay. Now, really quick again, a little tangent on that. Um, uh, previously up in the top here, we had the send feedback button. And uh, I want you to let you know, it's not that we got rid of it for you to easily send feedback. We've just moved it, okay? So now to the send feedback, you just come down here to the bottom left, right above the login or the profile icon, and you can hit this contact support slash send feedback. And then you can easily send this straight over to support um, to get easy, uh, easily to you know contact us, okay? So if you see a little problem, especially with something that's a new feature, Go over here, it'll help you do it. You can attach a file if you take a screenshot of something um, in there and that'll help you get to support uh, quick and easy, okay? So feel free to do that, all right? Now, to go back on this, um, I wanna talk uh, about it a little bit, but I wanna also focus on uh, one little feature relative to this where um, let's say in my thing where my sales guy, the person called and canceled, my sales guy went to the quote and they went to this and just said, hey, I'm just gonna go delete these lines. They don't want them anymore. And so I'm gonna delete those lines. And then it says, hey, I can also delete them from the pull sheet. We do see it doesn't allow us to delete them from the manifest because they were scanned onto the manifest. So I can't do that. But I do wanna delete them from the pull sheet, okay? So I can hit that there. Oh, it's complaining about that. We'll have to see. It should be able to let me do that, but we're having a problem, that's fine. Uh, let me just try by being more manual. Okay, I think by doing that other somehow it was trying to delete from the manifest, even though there are no buttons there. I'll have to talk to the team about that. No worries. Like I said, new feature, overall works great. Still might be a little bit of a uh, bug in it. Okay, 
So now if I go back to the prep screen and pop this open, I don't have anything on my list here anymore, okay? And that removes my ability to go to that one line and hit related scan records and see all of them. Now I can go to the manifest where I see that I scanned all four of those speakers, but in the old Flex 4 model, I then have to do these one at a time. When I go and hit this, yes, I do get the prep and return for this one, but any of the others. But now we have this new function where you can go down to the bottom and do this include all like units. And by doing that, suddenly every other speaker that's on that list is going to pop up. And so then I can quickly select all of it and I can undo them. Okay. So very cool there. Uh, related to that, one quick thing I want to mention. So on this one item that we have prepped and then returned, if we were like, oh, well, I just want to undo the prep and I went to this, you'll see uh, on, oh, that's not the right one, 126. Uh, so if I find that 126 there, you see that as soon as I select it, it undoes the return. It sets to do that. It says that's going to mess up the, the integrity of the scan log if you undo the prep, but it's still returned, it's going to be wrong. And so if I go to undo the prep, it has to undo the return. I can just return it by itself, but I can't I can't undo the prep without undoing the return as well. Okay, so that's another uh, cool thing on that. Okay, so uh, remember this include all like items and that, that it's smart and it's going to keep track of that data integrity while not keeping it in a parent-child relationship. We talked a little bit about that, but we're like, as long as it keeps that understanding of that integrity, it doesn't matter. Now, with this, I'm not going to process it yet. I also want to show uh, one great new feature is, uh, is the long-talked-about bulk undo. If instead the whole show was gone or giant large swaths of it, I can just go to it, select this, and go here. Now you'll note the bulk undo only exists on the manifest tab. It, of course, on the return manifest, if you returned and you wanted to bulk undo a return would work the same way, but it will not exist on the pull sheet level. You have to do it from the manifest level, but I can go to the manifest level and hit this. Now, a couple things I want to highlight in this, it's always going to pop up to remind you, hey, you're going to undo a bunch of these things. This cannot be undone. Are you sure you want to do it? But the other thing in this is it's saying there's a highlighted item that has a downstream scan. And that's that same one we talked about where I'd return to that speaker downstream. And it says, anytime I do this, I have to also undo any downstream scan. Now it highlights it here so I can look at it and decide if I want to do it, I can do it. I just have to say, yes, I agree. Understand it's also gonna undo that return. And then I can go ahead, and on this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to hit confirm, and you'll see it counting through as it processes each of them, and now they're all undone. As a quick note, because I remember the number, 00126, I go pop open that item and look at its scan log. We'll again see I had prepped it and then uh, returned it, and now both of those are reversed, and it does a free scan in to make sure it's all correct and in the right location um, and ready to go again. Okay, so that's the couple great new things should really save. Um, your guys will not need to go over to Flex 4 to fix if they're scanning issues, and you'll be able to do that even easier with that include like items and or the bulk undo. Okay, so that's the great new features relative to that scan log. So next on this, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some availability uh, things and little tools that we've added. So a comment that's been made a lot in the past, um, let me go in here. We're going to do it with these passive speakers, my 932s. So in Flex 4, next to any inventory item, there's a number in parentheses here, okay? Where there's a little number next to it. And that is to represent your on-hand quantities. Now, a lot of people have commented, hey, where, where are those numbers? Where are they gone? And the problem is we are like, they're not very actionable numbers because that's about what is sitting in the warehouse right now. And it has nothing to do with current availability because it could be that, yeah, you're planning a rental and it looks like there's all of those speakers are sitting there right now, but they could be planned to go out on a show tomorrow, all of them. And if you book some more, now, obviously you'll find that out if you bring it over to go book them. But sometimes the key is people want that information sooner. But we were still like, we don't want to put information that we think is bad or unhelpful information, information that is not actionable. And so what we've done instead is given you a way. If I have 
this quote open or any project that has dates, I can go to the item and right click it and you see at the bottom this availability pop out. And in that, it's going to give me my on hand of what's sitting there right now, the same number we used to get. But if I have an active tab that has dates in the future, then it's going to say, oh, well, my active tab availability on the rental stock, um, and that's going to be checking the default stock type for that job, uh, for the, the project. Then it says, oh, in that, it looks like you have four available. So there's some scheduled to go out the door before this, but we still would have four available if that's how many I wanted. Okay, So we get some of that information on it. And then as soon as I click out, it's done and we'd have to go click it again. So it's it's momentary information based on the tab that I currently have open and or still reminding me of that on hand information. Now, instead, if I want to look at, um, well, I have a bunch of different speakers and I'm not too picky about which one. So I just want to get a double check, which one should I do? Um, now, there is a discussion about working on something that's a little more like that uh, availability where it's just a little pop up there. But at the moment, the tool, and this tool did exist in Flex 4. Um, I think it's really cool and working really great in Flex 5. I don't have a lot of great folders for it, but I'm going to go down to this lighting and LED, where technically this isn't what I would be checking because I have the PARs, the cases for them, and the cables for them. But if I was to have three different LEDs here, I can go to my LED folder, right-click, and do Inventory Group Availability. And that's going to take anything in this folder and show it. Now, the highlight is it's in this folder, this level. So like in my speakers, where I have one in passive and one in powered, if I went to speakers here, it's going to end up blank because nothing is directly in the speakers. They're in these other two folders. It doesn't grab subfolders. So just really quick to show you kind of what it looks like. If I went and grabbed this inventory group availability, it's going to list me all of those items. It's got my lowest quality during the time frame. Now, by default, it put it from today and out seven days. But I could go in here and go, well, that's not what I'm concerned about. I need to look forward. So I need to look for, you know, this second week of August, maybe um, on there. Now, it's going to say this start date can't be after the end date. And that's true, but it didn't stop me from changing it. It just said, I'm not going to calculate anything yet. So now when I go here and then I update that, now it's going to update its calculation on what it believes is going on, what it believes is available. Okay. Now, there also is a constraint if you can't do more than 30 days. So if I push this out way here, it says, oh, date range can't be more than 30 days. So again, it doesn't load, but it does keep my date change. So then if I go here and I push this uh, to uh, somewhere where it's actually, let's see. Oh, that's 10.4 to 10.5. So if I go to 11.5. So if I push that there, then we get that. Um, now, obviously, I'm still not seeing all 30 days. I've got a scroll bar here. Um, on that, but it'll let me scroll over. It keeps all of those nice and even and clean to be able to figure out what I want. I, generally, I don't think you're going to look at that big of windows. You're going to look at a week window, a two-week window. Um, but again, a really nice tool. If this is taller, then there'll be a top up and down scroll bar that you can look through um, on that. Um, but again, a really nice tool where you want to say, I want to look at a bunch of items at a time in the future, and I want to get availability of it, rather than just looking at the schedule of one item, one item, one item, one item. I want to get a bunch of items. So that inventory group availability is a real nice tool. Okay. Um, after that, um, a thing I want to bring up, a lot of customers have been requesting this for a while. And it's actually been, again, this is one that's been released within a few patches. I just wanted to highlight it here, is that the ability to change the order of your projects in a project tree. So we're going to go to this receiving payments example where I've got three different quotes in here. And maybe in this, I decide this bottom quote should be the first one. Now, I think I just did a bunch of like leaving them the same name. And so it's not really sp specific on it, but you'll see in here, I've got my handle, my six dots on this, and I can take this and reorder these, okay? Um, however I want those to be. Now, important to note, I cannot change parent-child relationships with this. It was the same way in Flex 4, it's the same way now. I cannot change parent-child relationships, right? I can't go and put this in between the quote and the invoice here. I can't take my, uh, you see, I can't even grab that invoice because it doesn't have any siblings. Now, these ARs, I could change their order because they have siblings, but because nothing else is a child of this quote, oh, I can grab it there. It's actually loading. 
but you'll see there's nowhere where the system will let it because that would change the parent-child relationship. So I can't change that, but I can change the order of their at. And I do understand lots of people that have larger projects, put them in, and then afterwards realize you want to change the order of the quotes. And so we made sure to get that uh, improvement in there. So uh, we're going to go in here and open a contact. And I think on a lot of these, I end up using Flex Rental Solutions because I haven't loaded many contacts in here. So in Flex 4, when I looked at a contact, um, if there had been that contact associated with any um, element, a quote, a pull sheet, an invoice, whatever, then it would add a tab in their contact for each of those. And it loads the same kind of thing. But it was bad at noticing anything with parent-child relationship. If you did the company, but you had three different producers with them, it only loaded if you had chosen the company as the actual contact, not if you'd chosen that producer. For that producer, you have to go to the producer himself. Okay, And so we wanted to improve that. While we're at it, we decided, well, let's, let's change this so it's not all these different tabs, but let's unify it and put it together all in one place. Okay, so now you have on contacts this element history. And I can go to that element history and see what I find here. And I'm going to minimize the top so we can see. So we see here, it's got every single thing that um, the uh, that has been chosen for anything. Um, now, one on this is it's actually even deeper um, in this. And so you have to be prepared um, in this. Now, normally you're going to be looking at your clients. They're not going to be the ones making it. But you see on most of these, it's actually pulling me and it lists what the contact association is. So you could even actually do this to open up yourself or some salesperson and go, I want to see every project that this person is the account manager for or the project manager, whatever you call it. Okay. And then you can filter by that. You could say, oh, I only want ones that are account manager. If I do that, then it's going to filter out those ones that were saying customer. Or if I know it's then me, I'm only looking for me. I can filter to that. But if instead I'm like, no, I want to go back to all here. Now, one other important thing on this is it's going to default with the selected. We see down at the bottom here, the show child contact slash employees. So we could go and deselect that. And that's going to then only get the ones where it's the main contact, where it's the main thing, where it's been the vendor or the client, customer, uh, whatever kind of fields across that, right? So... Only those ones. But if we include that back in, then it gets back to everything. Now, the one thing to note is when you include the child contacts, then what it does is if it's the parent company, it ends up being blank here. It doesn't say anything. This is one where it's the parent and there isn't any child. Okay. Um, so again, we can uh, filter. Um, oh, yeah, I can't uh, sort by this one. And I don't know for sure why that is. But we can obviously filter to um, update on that. Um, so that's another really nice thing. Again, if we were like, oh, well, now I just really only want to look at quotes, I can hit in this filter and say only quotes. That's going to filter that. Again, though, I'm getting all these account manager ones. So we could say, hey, let's not pick me. Let's still include if it's Aaron or Chris, but not pick me. And there we go. There's a bunch of Chris because I've constantly put Chris as the client. So I can get some more information on that. Okay. So uh, that's a nice uh, little... Uh, um, tool in there that you can do where you can look at history. And again, you can go to the parent company and it will include all those children and to be able to get more of that information. Okay. So a uh, nice little uh, tool there. Um, the, I think there's one other thing that I'd seen that I wanted to highlight. Um, oh yeah. So just a really quick thing I wanted to show um, as an update. Um, uh, in Flex4, there's a tool over in the modify that said um, uh, the, um, oh, do I not have that set properly? Oh, because I don't have a client in here. Let me fix this. Let me go to this and, oh, let me just do this. Cancel and put that it's flex there. Doesn't have all the info and reload this. So we have one for, uh, reset terms, or I think previously it said apply trading terms. Well, I'm still not getting it. Maybe it's because I don't have any default terms uh, selected on this um, in here. So 
Let's go to the default terms and let's set something on this. Let's say that flex gets this next net 30 and they get tax exempt. Okay. Um, and let's do a full refresh on here. Okay. So now in here, yep, I think it's going to check for you have to have some kind of default terms. Um, now, again, if you, when you first build it, you select that company or that person and they have default terms, it should be filling in whatever those terms are. But if for some reason I didn't get it and I went and updated it afterwards, I have this ability to do this. And we've tried slightly renamed it to say apply default terms rather than apply terms. Okay. But you hit this apply default terms. Now, a note, we've made an improvement on this where we right now we see all of the different uh, terms that are going on and it's highlighting. Now, these are saying nothing was selected, so we're not going to do that. But you could say, you know, actually, all I want to do is fix the bright payment term. I don't want to fix these other things. So maybe on that, maybe I'd set a discount for a reason, so I don't want to do it. So you can select or deselect whatever you want and then hit I agree. Um, one key thing is this is being set to prep to help be able to fix in the future where there's going to be a thing to be able to better fix to say, I want to update my sales tax rule, but I want to update it based off the contact in the venue. It is not there yet, but we're doing a lot of things prepared for that because we know a lot of people, especially in the U.S., have destination-based sales tax. So whether it's different city, different county, different thing, and you can set those sales tax terms on the venues, and then you'll be able to use this feature to be able to do that. It is not implemented yet, but it is very much being forward thought for when the point we get to that. When we get to that, I will definitely highlight it because I know it's a thing a lot of people have requested. But I did just want to highlight that. Thanks again, everybody, for uh, your time, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.